Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise Walker, and I welcome you back to our show today. Thank you all for listening in. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon wherever you are in the world. And again, we just welcome you back to Hope in Christ um, here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. So before we begin, we want to remember and always put Um, at the forefront, that hope in Christ stands for hope, meaning healthy overcomers, purpose with an eternal perspective. And so here at Hope in Christ, we work on our spiritual health. We are overcomers, and we walk in our overcoming in Christ Jesus. And also we um, know and understand we have purpose, and we maintain our eternal perspective. So before we begin today's show, we have an amazing author, Shekana Downs, and um, before we chat with Shekana, we're going to start with a word of prayer. So, Father, we thank you, O God, for this time. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for your truth in the inward parts. Father, we just bless your name, and we magnify your name, and we thank you, O God, for what you have done and what you already will do and shall do in our lives. And so, Father, we pray, O God, that anybody that's listening that they would receive a word from you, O God, from on high, and that their lives would be changed because they would come to know the only hope, which is Christ our Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Again, I'm your host, Pastor Denise, and I welcome you here um, Hope in Christ, actually, this coming Sunday, will celebrate five years. And so we thank you all for tuning in. We thank you all for being there with us as we started the blog ministry and now with the podcast ministry. We are um, knowing that God is doing amazing things in all of us. And so, again, thank you for tuning in. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest, And, again, she is a phenomenal author and minister of the gospel. And so I'm going to have her tell us a little bit about herself. Hello, hello. Congratulations on five years. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. I, I pray God bless you with many, many more. Um, about me, let's see. I'm originally from Kentucky. I'm currently in Daytona Beach, Florida. February will make five years that I've been here. My move was definitely a God move. He said go, so I came. <laughs> um, it was probably the best decision I've ever made, and it's really the catalyst that led to me authoring books and actually getting them written. I had tried many, many times before, but just couldn't seem to get them finished. And uh, shortly after I moved here, I published my first book and connected with a great community of authors and writers and publishers and all that good stuff. Um, I am a therapist and social worker by day. So uh, I'm a superhero that doesn't wear a cape. (laughs) And uh, also a minister. I've been in ministry since 2011, Um, currently leading the singles ministry at my church, which is Fire to the Nations Global Ministries. Um, I've been doing singles ministry for about three years now. Um, So when I transitioned there, I got the great opportunity to bring my singles ministry along and... um, yeah, I'm I'm excited about everything that's happening. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, and um, blessings to you as well. Um, so tell us about your book, the title, and a little bit about what the book is about. So my latest release is called 21 Talks um, for Children and Teens. It got released with a partner, which is 21 Talks for Teachers. Um, they are the two newest in my series of prayer books. The whole series is called 21 Talks. Um, it kind of came from the premise of it taking 21 days to, to form a habit and just getting people to spend time talking to God for 21 days. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know how to pray. I can't pray those big, fancy prayers. It's just a conversation, so have a talk. Um, the two newest are... I wanted to do something for teachers because they spend so much time with our babies and pouring into our young people that they don't often get thanked or encouraged or have people to lift them up. So I wanted to write that one for them. And then because I do so much work with young people and children in therapy, um, there was a need. There was definitely a need there for some of their issues to be addressed, um, to be spoken to and covered in prayer. So that's how those two came to be. Amen, amen. And thank you for writing for us. I'm a, um, I'm a teacher during the day, and it is so true. We, um, I, I just think that people are starting to understand the work uh -huh. that is put in the, by teachers um, in this pandemic, but I mean, we just kind of feel like we've been beat up, but we know that God has called us to do a good work with the children. So, again, thank you for writing that one as well. And so can you um, tell us any other things that you have um, that you've been doing, the workshops or any other things that you've been doing as it pertains to your books? Absolutely. Um, um currently developing a new workshop that I hope to launch in 2021 um, that will be a self-care workshop that centers on taking care of your whole self, starting in a place of prayer and reflection and connecting with God to see what his plan is for you, to see, you know, what it is that he wants us to do and how we're supposed to be doing that so that we aren't running ourselves into the ground and um, getting involved in projects that we're not supposed to be in and using our resources frivolously. You know, just because we're good at it and we know how to do it doesn't mean it's for us. Sometimes we rob other people of opportunities of flowing in purpose because we're doing something that they're really supposed to be doing because we haven't sat down to pray and ask God if this is what we're supposed to do. So I think that's a huge part of self-care, um, and, and it's going to be one of the main building blocks for the new workshop. It doesn't have a name yet. It's still in the developmental stages, but that is definitely coming. Um, I also do, um, right now, I'm in the middle of a prayer challenge with our singles ministry. For the whole month of December, we've been doing um, a daily prayer challenge. Each day we have a different topic that we're covering, um, in, in one of the other books that I wrote uh, for the singles ministry, there's actually a 21-day prayer guide in the workbook. So it was kind of the first generation of 21 Talks um, before I ever got to these books. So we're doing that right now. Um, today's topic is having the mind of Christ. So each day we get a new topic to talk to God about, and um, myself or another member of the singles ministry goes live in our group and prays for whatever the topic is for that. And we're definitely going to do this again in uh, 2021 as well. Amen. Thank you. Um, prayer is definitely something that um, we really have to continue to do and um, be diligent about it because I think sometimes even, I know you were saying that it's the, you know, the 21 um, where we're talking to God, but also sometimes we are just doing more talking than we are listening. So 
Mm-hmm. And this prayer is um, helping us understand that as well, that God does speak to us. And so um, we should also be listening. So I just want to have you um, add a little bit to that statement. Absolutely. And and even in the books, um, my preface talks about that, you know, having that talk with God. It's, it's more of a conversation, so you're talking and listening. You know, you don't just get diarrhea at the mouth and spout out a whole bunch of stuff and get up and walk away. You have to spend that quiet time in reflection and being still and focusing your mind. He tells us to meditate on his word day and night. That's how we get to know him. So when we spend that quiet time in the midst of our prayers, after we've said our peace, we have to spend the time to listen for instruction, for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding, for insight. You know, sometimes for that no or that correction that we need and not being so quick to get up and walk away. Amen, amen. Um, Absolutely. It's just sitting in silence, sitting in that silence. And um, I just love to do that. I love to sit in silence, especially after the week, and to sit in silence and hear from God, and so I thank you for, um, again, being uh, the leader of that, teaching that as well. And uh, one of my other questions that came to my mind while you were talking is, uh, what if you could think of one prayer scripture that you love, what prayer scripture, scripture would that be? Hmm. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite necessarily prayer scripture, but one of my favorites in general is, um, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. And that is my favorite because it helps me put things in perspective Even in my prayers, like when I'm going through things, it reminds me that this is only temporary and and that what I'm in the middle of right now is something that God has allowed, and at the end of it, he's going to get glory. So whatever it is, whatever's going on, whatever I'm praying about, whatever I'm facing, it might be rough in the moment, but in the end, God's going to get glory out of it. Amen. I was actually just saying that today. I said, Lord, <laughs> no matter what we're going through, you're going to be glorified, and, and and we're going to look back and say, okay, God, I see. I see what you were doing in that. So, yes, um, I totally agree. And so I have a couple other questions, and this one is specifically about writing, just being a writer. What is your favorite thing about writing? And then I'm going to ask you the other question is the opposite. What's your least favorite about um, writing? Okay. My favorite thing about writing is that it is a complete outlet. You can, you can write when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're frustrated. You can completely be somebody else. You can create whole new worlds and, you know, just fully use your imagination to to be creative, to be expressive, um, and to reach people in a way that you may not otherwise be able to or to give somebody else the words that they've been trying to put together but couldn't seem to. Um, My least favorite thing about writing is probably writer's block when I get stuck creatively or when I'm just not motivated to write because sometimes when you get in that emotional space where you are overwhelmed or processing or just get hit with a lot all at once and you're trying to find your words and your voice to put on paper, it can be a little difficult sometimes. So that's my least favorite part. Thank you for sharing that. that yeah, I, um, I can say that as well because sometimes I just have to get up and just walk away from it. And uh-huh. sometimes I think I walk away from it too long. So I think that's one of my least favorite is making sure I discipline myself 
um, to get it done. So, and one of the one other of the, questions I have. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say one of the things I do when I get stuck is I'll write something from a completely different genre just to give myself, you know, another outlet. So if I'm writing something inspirational, I'll pull, like, a creative writing prompt and just randomly get one online and spend 10, 15 minutes doing that just to get my creative juices flowing, to take my mind off of what I'm supposed to be writing, to give myself a break, and then I'll come back to it. That's a that's a good idea. I like that. Um, so another question I have is um, any other upcoming works that you're working on? Yes. Um, got lots of new stuff coming and good things coming. 2021, I will be releasing 21 Talks for Men and 21 Talks for the Traumatized Heart. That um, That book coincides with the workshop that I offer for trauma. Um, the workshop talks about um, how trauma affects our relationships and the way we love. So I'll be doing that workshop January 16th. Um, the book may not be done by then. Hopefully it will. But if not, shortly after. Um, on January 2nd, I'm doing a virtual vision board party um, with the singles ministry, but it's open to anybody who wants to come and be a part of that. We will be um, sharing our visions and, and goals for the year and things that we want to accomplish and ascribe to. Um, and then I'll also be um, doing a lot more with self-care um, Sundays. I do that every Sunday at 8 p.m. on my author page on Facebook just to give people a boost for mental health and really taking care of your whole self. We talk about finances, mental health, spiritual health. Um, we talk about um, self-care in, in the form of psychological care, you know, going to therapy, um, meditating, prayer. We talk about food and um, making sure you get your doctor's appointments, all the forms of self-care to really care for the whole being. That sounds awesome. And I do remember you and you talking about the workshop on the 16th. I did write that down, so I'm going to try to attend mm -hmm. it as well um, because I believe that there is um, a traumatized heart that does affect relationships because I was that person. So, um, I would love mm -hmm. to attend that workshop. Awesome. All right. And so um, my other question is, if you have your book nearby, um, would you mind reading just uh, an excerpt out of it? Sure. Let me grab it. This one is actually not from the teachers or children because I don't have any more copies of those right now. This one is from 21 Talks, Conversations with God, but it's still applicable. Um, it says, Father, I thank you for this day and for the opportunity to be greater than yesterday. I pray that my only competition today is self. Help me be better each day and grow in grace and love. Father, I pray that my words are wiser, my deeds are rooted in love, and my thoughts come from the mind of Christ. Renew my mind and give me a servant's heart. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It kind of sounds, um, I know it's a prayer, but it kind of reminds me of affirmations as well. Um, mm -hmm. We're repeating the word to ourselves, so thank you for sharing that. All right, and so um, my other question is, how can people connect with you? How can they, um, you know, reach out to you to be a part of the workshops and things like that? Um, they can find me on Facebook, which is probably the easiest way. Um, if they search for C. Jaquis, it's C J A Q I S. You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, um, probably Twitter. Um, just search that and I'll pop up. And um, from there, they can connect with the singles ministry. They can connect with um, what's going on workshop-wise, self-care Sundays. Everything is kind of right there in that spot. 
All right. And then how can they purchase your books? My books are available at blurb.com. And if you go to Blurb and you can search for that same name, C. Jaquise, and I should pop up as an author. And all of the books are right there on my profile. There's also a Shop Now button on my um, Facebook page that will take you directly to those books. Oh, wow. Okay. That's something new. I never heard of that. But thank you. Thank you for um, sharing that. And definitely those that are listening um, can benefit from the amazing um, books that you have been writing and um, sharing. And, again, I, I know that it helps with, um, like you said, seeing both sides of it and the mental health and everything. So, again, thank you for sharing that. And so, Thank you um, so much. Um, do you have any other encouraging words for those that are listening? Absolutely. I would just say that the, even though the pandemic is rough and a lot has changed, that it's a great opportunity and a great time to start something new, to go after that dream, that thing that you've been hesitant about doing, the thing that you've always pushed to the back burner. God has rearranged everything so strategically and intentionally to create opportunities for us to be who he's truly called us to be, even in the midst of a pandemic. You know, we can still be successful. We can still be prosperous. We can still flow in purpose. So don't let what you see around you keep you bound in fear from going after the things that God's ordained for you. Amen, amen. I absolutely agree with that. God is doing something right now. Um, I yes, think about he is. Joseph, I think about even in the times of trouble, I, I think about what he did in Joseph's life. And um, that came to me the other day, and I said, Lord, mm, because Joseph was, you know, so slavery and everything. And God just did a miraculous thing in his life, and, and even his, his siblings who had done it to him were amazed at what, you know, God had done. And so I absolutely believe that he can do anything in this time. Um, we have to believe that as well. Yes, ma'am, he can. All right, so thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to pray us out. Um, again, thank you for um, sharing such amazing resources with the audience, and I pray that those of you that are listening will grab copies of these books because they are much needed in this time, and I pray that you would reach out to um, Shekana because um, I think you'll be blessed by her ministry. So I'm going to pray us out. So, Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this time. Once again, I pray for your woman of God. I pray, O oh God, that you would bless her continuously, and I pray that you would continue to use her mightily in um, the purpose that you place inside of her. And I pray that those that um, connect with her will um, be change because of um, what you placed in her. And so, Father, I pray for those that are listening that somebody heard something that helped them come to hope. And so, Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, and we glorify your name, and we continuously say thank you, amen, and amen, and amen. Amen. Again, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. Again, you have been listening to author Shekana Downs and um, Pastor Denise Walker here on Hope in Christ with Denise. And we pray that you will have a phenomenal rest of your week and have a phenomenal Christmas. And remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. <music>